welcome to the Public Safety Committee meeting, a uh, special meeting of December 14th. Is it 14th? Yep. Yes, mm -hmm. it's the 14th. Okay, and this is a special meeting tonight to consider the taxi permit appeal of Jeffrey Miller. And um, we have background material that um, if you need a packet, do you have a Yeah, packet? I didn't get a packet here. Yeah. Okay. Pass this down to right. that yes, one? Yes, keep that one. Okay. And um, we've invited the uh, appellant, Jeffrey Miller, and the police chief um, to uh, address the situation. And I guess we'll start with um, we'll start with uh, Mr. Miller and ask if you want to make a statement uh, regarding the situation and sure. then I'll turn it to the Chief. I'd like to first of all thank you all for uh, convening under these circumstances. I know that you're going into a new term and there was nothing on your agenda so I, I appreciate uh, you calling me on my behalf. Um, Basically, as many of you know, I've been at Home Cosmic Cab now for about four years. Uh, started out, and uh, along this similar circumstances, I didn't have my, my permit. I was denied that from, from the get go, um, you know, which was overturned probably about a year and a half uh, of owning the business and uh, due to one of these same types of meetings. Um, now, it turns out that uh, I had uh, run in with the Northampton police um, recently, six months recently, and there was a circumstance where uh, 911 was called and uh, the officers did show up. They were explained to that there was an accidental call um, and they proceeded to, you know, search the premises. Uh, claiming to do so in the, in the safety of whatever 911 call, which was which was uh, disputed to the 911 officer as well as the North Hampton police. Um, so that gave forth to a court case in which um, was the the I don't know what the exact terminology is that they used, but it was dismissed. Uh, we filed a motion based on the uh, the legality of that said search, and the court ruled in. in my favor. Um, I didn't immediately go to the police. I, I gave it a, a due time, six months for my permit. Um, you know, I, I reached out to the Northampton Police Department and uh, left uh, two messages there, and I, I received no word back from them regarding. You know, when I when I initially got the uh, revo revocation of the suspension of, of, of license. It was a hand-delivered letter, and the letter simply stated, due to what we saw, we feel it as though you're not responsible to have this permit, and, and we're, we're uh, taking it. Uh, so, you know, after the court case, it was a long court case, it was about four months, four or five months, and um, I waited a little bit longer just to give that due time, you know, um, I want to see this rushing in or you know I understand the situation um, and so I, I had to reapply I reapplied through City Hall and was denied so you know with with no explanation and um, yeah, I don't you know in, in legal terms I, I'm not sure you know, I'm sure there are some legal terms that can define this or, you know, put this in a better light or what this, that, and the other thing. But basically, you know, my, my business depends now on me having a permit and um, has suffered tremendously. And, you know, my livelihood is, is now in question and the business is in question. Um, you know, we, we get up, we do a public service as far as I'm concerned, for Northampton. And we do it gladfully and willingly and, and, and happily, you know? And my, my employees have suffered, um, the business is suffering, the customers have suffered. And I understand that, you know, the, 
the on the police what they saw and then said, said in the letter based on what we saw now because the court had in essence you know said that that was not a legal or, or lawful uh, search of premises that you know what was the you know well, why would they then for, therefore continue to you know, deny me that that privilege Okay, I'll ask um, my colleagues to so hear it from Chief Casper uh, mm -hmm. first and then ask questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. From Chief Casper. Sure. Um, so when we look at taxi licensed candidates, uh, it's not a simple kind of black and white as it may be with, say, license to carries or, you know, something to do with firearms where there's a very clear set of criteria and if there's a a felony violation and we say no you can't have it um, there's a little more leeway uh, for the the police chief or his or her designee to, to look at the person's history and involvement and, and to make a decision on that and of course our number one you know priority is making sure that whoever we give a license to if, if someone's going to get in the car with you that, it, that it's safe you know and that there's certainly no crime being committed and that people are in a place where um, it's safe and, and with a person who's safe and so some of the, th the two ways that we really do that are we look at their, their criminal record, certainly, as well as their, their driving record. Those are two of the, the key factors that we look at. Um, and, and Mr. Miller is a gentleman who, who we've had much involvement with over the years. And I know Chief Sinkowitz, last time he came before this group, mentioned the, the many, many contacts that we've had. Uh, and I think that, that despite those, and, and just looking at the notes from when Chief Sinkowitz spoke, um, with over 38 district court arraignments, five arrests in Northampton, 57 police calls. That was at that time, and of course there's been a few more since then related to this specific event that you talked about. So I think already uh, the police department has been more than generous in, in understanding that certainly we want your, your business to do well, we don't want to cause any, any issues to your livelihood or the livelihood of your employees. Uh, however, we're not the one who made the decision that you made in May. So that decision was made by you and we know about that, we know what was going on in there. Whether or not the courts felt that the search was something else, I understand that your case was dismissed, but that doesn't mean that we don't have the knowledge of what was going on. So with that knowledge, I couldn't in any good, you know, good conscience uh, grant you a, a taxi license to drive around the city uh, knowing that that was going on. So that's what we based our decision on. Um. So I guess I'll ask uh, my colleagues if you have questions for Mr. Miller or for Chief Casper and start with <coughs> Councilor Adams. Um, I was on this committee for the last appeal and we voted, well, well, the, well the appeal uh, was unsuccessful. Um, it was a split vote two two, not enough to overturn the appeal. Um, I was uncomfortable upholding the denial of the appeal because um, the information we were given, you know, the, 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 the chiefs, this chief and the past chief cannot give out all the information. I don't think, if I remember correctly, I mean, they can tell us, you know, what we've been told, the number of arraignments, um, arrests, et cetera, but we don't know, we don't know what the convictions, we don't know what, what, what your record has for convictions. Um, and I was uncomfortable with, you know, you know, telling us 57 police calls in Northampton means very little to me because that includes even where you're a witness. So if you're a witness to a case and your name comes up, well, then those are included in that list. That's extremely unfair because you could have been a witness to a crime or a victim of a crime, perhaps. Um, and so, but I, but I, but the reason why I voted for that to to overturn the appeal was because you know you, you told us the story of your business. You told us the story of yourself somewhat. You told us about how you turned your life around, how you overcame homelessness, homelessness and all these things that I thought were very admirable. Um, but now we're here again, unfortunately. So, you know, the reasons why I voted to overturn the appeal had to do with um, the fact that it seemed like, you know, it's, it seemed like the things that were of concern were in the past and, and we don't have full access to exactly what your record is. Um, so I'm wondering if you, I mean, you, you certainly don't have to, but I'm wondering if, if, if you'd be willing to share your record of convictions with us. So so, so we know, because the police department can't tell us, um, but they seem to think there's a public safety concern. Um, you know, and, and 
I understand the case was thrown out, and I appreciate that. There, there are constitutional issues, but um, you know, they're, 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 for the purposes of the court, there's there are the constitutional issues, and if, if you know, so so that that case is, is gone because of constitutional issues. We do know factually there was a marijuana found in there. Um, I, I read the articles, mm -hmm. and I know that you said it's for personal use. The police also felt that there was other evidence that. Um, Indicated that it was more than just personal use, like bags, the scales, etc., um, and also you know cocaine possession, which is a subsequent offense. So, what I'm wondering um, is if you could, if you'd be willing, and you certainly don't have to, but if you'd be willing to address any convictions you have, because we don't know what they are. Mm -hmm. But I think that's, but based on those convictions, I think the, the police department's concerned yeah. about no, the understand. safety of the public. I understand. I had a, I had a very hard time kind of coming up and I, you know, uh, let it get the best of me a little bit. And um, as far as the convictions that I've faced, I mean, I'll go so far as to saying that I've never spent more than a month in jail. You know, um, I've been on probation since I was 17. Uh, you know, I finally got off probation when I was 34, off and on. I had some periods where I, you know, I wasn't around, I, you know, I had to go take care of some things. I got cleaned up a heroin in, in, uh, in New York. I was, you know, I was caught here maybe once or twice with that in the, in the mid to late 90s. Um, you know, I've, I've struggled. I've done everything in my power to get to where I am right now. Um, as far as what was seen or what is known, I mean, that is completely just, what would the word be, subjective. I mean, I, I was not dealing drugs. I do not deal drugs. And if that's the concern, and that seems like what you're saying is that is the, your primary concern, then that's not the case. Yes, I smoke marijuana. Um, you know, I, I, I don't drink alcohol. I haven't had a drink of alcohol in two years. You know, um, but basing what you saw on what, if you looked closer, you'd know that that wasn't the case. I mean, what, what was there was, was old and had probably been sitting there for over three years and pushed it, and pushed it, you know? It wasn't at all like what, um, what, what, what Jeff, Jeff, the, the police report says that you said that you just used the drugs. Yeah. Okay, so, right, okay. Yeah, uh, I, you know, um, I've worked, I've, I've, I've done everything that's asked, been asked of me in this case, with, whether it was the, the company or the permit, and, and you know, um, I mean, I'm, ju I'm just hoping to continue on with what I've already been working on. It's not a, a case of, you know, uh, I see as though I did this awful, horrible thing. I didn't. You know, like, like I said, smoke marijuana. It's decriminalized now. It's, you know, sold two doors down for me. Um, so with, with that being said, I mean, you know, I could go into my convictions and everything, but it is so, it, it's a long, you know, everything has an explanation is what I, uh, is what I mean. And I'm the type. A couple other things too. It, last time, um, there were uh, the you had uh, you had a situation with 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 taxi permitting in Amherst, and 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 Chief Livingston was giving you six months. This is years ago yep. to 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 come back and reapply. Yep. Do, has this? Do you still have taxis out there? I don't. We don't. You don't have them out there. Anymore? Okay. No. Okay. And there was one other question I had for you, which was. I guess that's it. Someone else. Uh, I'm sure. Yes, please. Okay. So actually, it's more so than now. Actually, Jeff is the. I mean, as I recall, in the last appeal, and the. Um, well, and in fact, when we approved the license, we, were, we actually made a point of talking about how, how you got clean, things were you, things were shaping up, and you were then you were feeling better about life, and you actually are running a, a good, decent company. Uh, with good caps and very conscientiously, and that was in the context of some other cap companies and livery people who were not. Which none of that's changed. 
Right. Sure. I mean, yeah. But the more salient question now is um, because, yeah, you're using marijuana. What's the deal with the cocaine? What's up with that? And you don't. And by the way, let me let me, let me let me let me explain. You don't have to say anything as far as any of this because I don't want you to implicate yourself. And in, in, right. but the and as as Chief Casper points out, and I think as as Councilor Adams is saying, we're not a court of law. We're um, but the fact is, stuff that you do say can actually be held I because of being kept in minutes. And the thing is, is, we also don't have the same standards of of making the decision based on. The constitutionality of a case, but the fa the facts of the case still are germane to us in Senate because what we're doing is we're taking a risk if we approve it or or, or you um, you win your appeal that we are taking the responsibility of putting the public in jeopardy. So that's a primary concern. That's our primary job. So that's that's the context in which I ask you. You're not obliged to answer, but there was cocaine that was associated with that arrest. Um, the other thing is, is that me, I don't know how you're doing today. You feeling clean? Are you still clean now? I mean, oh, you yeah. just just weed, and it's it's. I don't okay. honestly, like I said, I don't even drink, okay. and I don't do cocaine. I mean, are you in program? No. You know, no. What kind of pro I mean, I've been ten, 10 plus years. Okay. With, and you know, without my whatever the DOC they call it. Right. And um, that it was a, you know. A, Dumb mistake, and it's not something that has been an issue or or is a you know. It, it part part of the thing is we have to feel confident that we issue a license that the operators are not operating under the influence, no. and you do smoke. I, I we mean, we it. so it's you know we uh, you know we deal with some pretty particular customers, and my customers would not accept any kind of. Know, messed up behind the wheel. I've had a couple of cases where, yeah, I can't control what people do. And I've had some drivers where I know what they're doing and I don't want them doing it, and you know what I mean? Um, but, you know, how far do you, how far do you go? You know, with, with that, you know, it's like... Well, you, uh, I don't know. I mean, that's up to your company I, policy. I, I almost had to institute drug testing. For my, I mean, that's how serious about this business uh, that I am. I don't want to put hours and hours and years of work into something that's getting, you know what I mean, that's a, a failing issue where I'm not concerned with the safety of my customers or the safety of my drivers or the safety of the general public. Right. That is apparently, that's number one to us. We, we hope to excel in business, not to, to fall back. And the mistakes that I've made in my life Happen to have included some some drug use, of which I don't partake. I mean, if that was a random soul occurrence, and the coincidence of that was just I, I don't know I don't know how the whole thing was just like a the, the officer in court even said it said it was too it, it was you couldn't believe that it was that much of a coincidence that this guy's knocking on the door saying Northampton police and his phone dials nine one one. If that wasn't a wake-up call for me, then I don't know. The whole thing was a wake-up. Aside from this or losing my permit, just in my personal life, and the work that I put in, you know, I don't, I wouldn't go back down that path. It's just not a path as far as the personal question that you asked me about, am I using it, but, you know. No, well, win, lose, or draw. You know, I've made that that resolution for myself because I've been able to be away from that long enough to see who I really am. Well, I, mean, you I know what I mean. And you know, I think we're we're certainly concerned about you personally. Yeah. But but that's not what our job is at this point. Mm -hmm. That's and that that uh, our job is. I mean, this is the second the second well third appeal of county on this and that we and in fact actually. Um, we invest a lot of optimism and hope. Yeah, bad circumstances or coincidence or whatever the fact remains. Well, it's not just bad circumstances. I mean, it coincided in a way that was just like, you know, I was being chilled with a message. I mean, that was the, the, the one time that happened, that had happened, you know, 
And this was on the tail end of, of the, 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 one of our busiest stretches. And it was just like, you know, I won't have to make excuses for something that, you know, I, I wouldn't see as an issue of driving people or being, because number one, if I am driving people, you know, there's nothing. There's, I don't smoke weed. Like I said, I don't drink, you know. I have to stay alert. I have to, you know, be up late and this and that, and maybe somewhere in that, it something caught up with me for half a second. Yeah, I mean, you the, know, that's but, but and it's been six. You know what I mean? But it's been six months for me. I hear you. It's no, not I, like this happened yesterday, and I'm coming to you saying, hey, you know, it, this happened six months ago. Yeah, but we're we're functioning in a vacuum. That we do basically. We can attribute a lot of this to bad luck. Say that this is bad luck, and the fact is, yes, marijuana is decriminalized, and medical marijuana is down the road. The fact is, though, of course, free and clear of everything else, without the history, that probably is not a, as big a deal as the. And the problem is, is that you've got <clears throat> you have this accumulation, and I understand your narrative, your storyline is completely different than what it looks like on paper, and I know that. Well, I got hit in more ways than that. It was in the paper. It was now I yeah. lost my permit. Now I, you know, and it's like if that doesn't mold you into seeing what needs to be done, because now you've worked and you've put this effort in for years. I mean, I've I've had to even in the six months re-examine my business to a point where I could cover the loss from ha not having a permit. Meaning, doing all my repairs, doing you know, goes from trying to do uh, your own alignment. You know, it's like. <laughs> well, it's, it, it's, it's the tricky part. You know, is but in, within that, I'm saying is there is there is a process of molding of of my or remolding of myself because you know not to go into a, a long story, and that's why I kind of stay away from Jesse's question because that's a long story. Mm -hmm. You know, and there's a lot of ins and outs and it, 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 whatever with that. You know, but I have. I've had to just take a harder, harder look from the hard look that I had to take before, you know, and taking a harder look. And I, you know, you guys really, you, you went out on them, you, you overturned the appeal. I think I put two years on paper of really putting my best foot forward and not having any incidents or any run-ins, actually being a service to the, to the police. They, they call me for cabs. You know, when they have a, a, someone that they needs to get a ride or an accident or, a, you know, somebody lost and you know, can't find their way um, or get away back home. Um, so I just hope you would look at that and not look at the, you know, that, that bad set of circumstances that, that arose from, you know. And even uh, um, Chief Casper, said herself that that wasn't the, their concern. The concern you stated primarily was, in the letter to me, was the, the dealing factor of the marijuana. And to state that if that was taking place, that you wouldn't feel comfortable thinking that I would be doing that in, a, in, in a, the cab or in my office. Correct? Yeah, I don't feel comfortable with any of it. I don't. And it's recency. I mean, those are my two, my major concerns. I'm not happy with a lot of my own actions. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and I'm not here protesting. You know, that I'm just protesting that. Hey, I've I've really given a lot, and I, I'm willing to give more. You know, I, I'm. You know, and I and yes, things were seen. I screwed up. Like I said, it's a it's a wake up call. And I take it as a wake up call. I mean, I, I, I have to pay a lot for it. You know, I've lost money on my. So the, I mean, the difference in. I mean, the punishment. Well, that's. It, that's, that's I want to speak to that because actually, we're, we're not charged with punishing. We don't punish. I and mean, in fact, actually, what we're doing is determining whether um, someone deserves a, a privilege. Mm -hmm. So we're authorizing. Not everyone can qualify for a cabin license. So it's not a punishment insofar as and what you're asking us, because we are not charged with meeting out punishments. We right. don't do that. But the fact is that we are in charge of administering a privilege, which is in the form of a license. 
and with that comes uh, a significant responsibility on us. I understand, I mean, you know, I hear your story, and, and in fact, actually, I, I feel very deeply for you, and I'm really, and you know, in the years that I've known you, I've, I've, I've watched your struggle, I've watched you crawl out, and I've watched you do some pretty amazing things. But the fact is, is that, um, the fact that cumulatively, it's hard for me to make a case to the public that we're gonna give them another shot with a license, and I couldn't justify it on the face of it. I could tell them your story and the parts of the story that I know, which is not a lot ultimately, but the parts of your story that I know. But that's not gonna make a bit of difference if there is an accident associated with an OUI or something else, or if there is a, another bust or another fall. And it's, it, it's, we'd have to answer to the public and I'm not, and I'm trying to figure out how I'd be able to come up with a good answer. That's my challenge. May I just ask a, um, just a timeline question? I'm, just, uh, I'm a little confused because I, and I know I was there, I know that we um, came before us with an appeal in, in 2012 and, um, and on a two to two vote, that appeal was um, not granted and the denial of the permit was uh, was held. But then how is it that you came to get a permit? I guess, uh, that, you know, I'm a, so I may, I'm just wondering if I've missed something along, did I miss something there? When did you, so did you apply then again and were granted? How I did forget you exactly it? how it, it turned um, out. I remember speaking with, with Chief uh, Sinkwitz and I think he might have overturned it or something. I don't know why the call was directly for him from him. The original denial was was denied and, and yeah. was not overturned, to my knowledge, by this group. Uh, and and you went to Chief Sinkowitz again and, and put in a new request. So the old one was denied and it, mm -hmm. and it remained that way. And the new request, and I think it's he he granted you a license. And it's the same thing that we all feel. Everyone hears your story and feels bad. I want you know we all are optimists and we want to support you in those things. Um, but that's what happened. He, I think he he wanted to give you another chance, and I think he did. And then this occurred, and then it was removed again. Okay, okay, I understand now. So, okay. so um, this body never did overturn. Well, I, I know we didn't came think, before yeah. us, and it looked like we had uh, our minutes show it being t uh, continued to a next meeting, and then the next meeting. But ultimately, it shows that this body on a two-to-two two vote did not grant the appeal. Mm -hmm. And so now I understand that though the chief then did give you. So, I don't know, I'll ask other other questions that, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. but when, the, when the appeal was denied back in 2012, and, and when, the, when the appeal was denied and, and, and the, the chief secret's decision was upheld, how did the business survive after that? Oh, in 2012, we were small. We only had one cab. But the the yeah. overhead wasn't it near nearly what what it's become. Um, when, when was your case dismissed? Oh, just <coughs> not even a month ago. A month. And do you think your business can survive? If I mean, uh, we'll do our best. I, I'm, I, you know, it's just a, um, it's it's just more stress on me. Basically, is what it comes down to is that, you know, I've had to, re like I said, I've had to re-examine the business. I have to re-examine my my personal life. Um, you know, I've really, I I did better than even I was knew that I was doing until it was kind of gone. What do you mean, business wise? Business wise. Yeah. And it, you know, a lot of times I think when, it, especially in my situation, coming from kind of the place that I've come from you know, a little bit less than privilege or whatever, it, it happens so fast and when those things start surmounting, you're just focused on, you know, keeping up with it instead of where you are. And then all of a sudden you look down and you're, and it's, and it's pretty far, you know, you, to build a business like that. And, uh, you know, with the amount of overhead that I'm facing now, it's just, you know, I would have to take some pretty drastic measures. I don't, I don't, just, so you know, and I don't want to go out of business. I'm not, I'm not I, I'm planning on it. I wouldn't plan on it 
whether based on this ruling and, and, and frankly and truthfully I didn't come into this meeting thinking that anything was going to take place as far as uh, an overturn of, of, of the, the police as you guys have been told that actually that wasn't a possibility that at the end of the day the police actually have final say you know, not, whether or not the appeal was through so to me coming in here wasn't okay I want to convince you rather than just like I want to have my say I've, I've reached out to them a couple times and I got no response. So I, I appealed, was, um, or I, I reapplied and it was denied. So I, you know, I then took further steps to, to uh, see if there was another way to kind of have a face to face or to get kind of for, for, my, for my consideration too. Because if I know what's going on, I can therefore then plan accordingly. If I'm just sitting and it's an open end, then I don't, I don't know what. You know what to do, kind of in that in that respect. Other than just like keep the head down, and keep working, and, and hope that things work out, which they probably will. We got good drivers, you know. Um, we've taken a lot of bumps, so we're ready for, for more. But uh, you know, that's that's kind of what I came in here was was just to have a voice, and I, I didn't feel as though I maybe had a voice in the situation. Um, being, being denied and you know then reaching out and not getting a response so I just don't want to feel as though I just kind of kind of passed over whereas I I mean it's it's really important that I know one that's going on two that the possibility could exist that it would be reinstated and you know three just to know what was on your mind just to hear exactly what you had said and, and where you know um, Kind of understood. Well, just uh, so you know, I'm not sure why you know why why you're under the impression that if this committee chose to overturn the appeal, that the police could then just deny that. That's that's not the case. Just so you know. Okay. Um, nice. And the other thing is that just just so you know, I don't think we I don't think we have the authority to put conditions on this. I think we either say yes or no to to, to the appeal, and that's it. Yes. So a, a question for Chief Casper. So the case was dismissed because the discovery was not allowed? That's, that's my understanding. I, I don't want to speak too much to the court case just because mm -hmm. if he wants well, to speak to it, he can. But yeah, but the grounds for dismissal was that the discovery, the judge said the discovery wasn't proper, and therefore. That's my understanding. That's where the case fell apart. I guess so. Okay. Yeah. I didn't really get a ruling back from them. I just got my bail received. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so I'm... I've actually done these a lot because I, I was on the state licensing board for a long time and we quarried everybody that came in for a license because they dealt with the public. So I've actually done this uh, a lot. I've done this, it's unusual to <laughs> do it again, but I've done, I've done this sort of thing before. And, and as, as Councillor Dwight said, the overwhelming responsibility we have is, is the public safety. And because we can put you in a car where you're driving members of the public, that's why we have that concern for public safety. You can continue to own your company because obviously in the beginning when you started your company, you didn't have a license then and you ran your company. Um, but I, I was here for the first appeal and when I considered what was a multi-year history, your multi-year history at that point, I didn't think in aggregate it was a good idea and I voted against overturning Chief Sinkowitz's denial. So obviously we're here again and under the circumstances, I don't feel any better about it. And I, I, th I thought about what you told me earlier and you mentioned that, you know, you even thought about testing your drivers to make sure this isn't a problem. And what that says to me is that even you wouldn't hire you. It's not true. So why would that say that to you? Because but I deal with people based on their based on their personality and what I see from them on a daily basis, not from what a piece of paper tells me. Mm -hmm. But we are we have more than a piece of paper now. We've this is our second time in three years that we're dealing with you on the same issue. Okay. So this isn't just reading a piece of paper. This is talking to you. This is you know looking at the physical history that we have, but also in dealing with you for that length of time and what you've told us. And I, you know, if it comes down to my way of thinking about it, I would be uncomfortable putting a loved one in a cavity. 
and that's really going to be the basis for my decision. I, I wasn't comfortable in 12, and I'm still not comfortable. And no, nothing you've told me tonight really changes that position. I haven't really told you anything, though. I've answered some questions regarding, you know, the state of, of the fairies that were discovered by the police in my, you know, um, I still don't know, I, I'm not going to try, obviously. Um, you know, it wouldn't be worth my while, I don't feel, because obviously you have your, your set in a, an opinion of me based on paperwork, because it would take a little bit more than what I've, what I've uh, discussed or shared with you here for you really to get an idea of who I am or what I, I do, and, and I am, frankly, a little nervous, and I, you know, I want to choose my words really carefully mm -hmm. here because I don't, you know, but that's upsetting to me that, that you would feel that way, and given the fact that I've put in so much work and over the past four years have, you know, pretty much given this town a, 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 a step above mm -hmm. as far as transportation. Mm -hmm. And if you were to take the time and look at the progression of such said companies in Northampton, you would see that we're eons from, you know, as far as the safety is concerned, and the, mm -hmm. the pub, like, eons away from um, where, where when I when I came, you know, and started Cosmic Cap, um, we've taken more precautions. Where and I and I can speak that to knowledge because I worked for the companies that, you know and with the people that were granted permits to, to drive around. And I saw the, the inside conditions of those companies, and I wasn't very happy with it. So I've taken my time to give this town, which has given me a lot, something ex extra special. And I'm sorry if in my spare time that I had some extracurricular things that probably, you know, aren't, aren't the best, I admit it. But people go and drink and, and do a lot of other things in their spare time that might not promote a safe in, environment if they were looked on, in, at in a certain, or cast in a certain light. So, you know, I'm sorry that you feel that way. Mm -hmm. um, and we have, but we have to consider your life in aggregate. We have to take the good with the bad. And there's some of both, I'm sure. But you have a right to make a living, but a living that requires a license that's connected with public safety might not be the best choice. Well, this, I mean, this kind of just fell in my lap, uh, so to speak. I saw an issue, I saw a, a, a gap, and that was also a business, and I became familiar and with it, which was the, the taxi industry in the valley, and saw how poor it was and devalued and uh, under-regulated under anything. And I lifted it up. And you can ask the Hotel Northampton. You can ask the Northampton police. You can ask the Cooley Dickinson Hospital. I, I'll give you hundreds of names that will say that every time that we got into a cosmic cab, we felt safe, we felt appreciated, valued as a customer, and we would return. So I don't see how that could not weigh against the, you know, mm -hmm. and 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 you know, I, I, four I, years of of a spotless. I may be, you know, you may run a really good company, well, but that doesn't make me any more comfortable. Have you driving for? Me. Well, that I drove for for three, two and a half years, and I mean, the same people would attest to my abilities and my uh, concern for their safety when they get into the vehicle and one of our vehicles. Yes, Councilor Adams. Um, Chief Casper, if you can answer this. Has there ever been any complaints of uh, any any customers in, in, in the history of the business, um, you know, after a ride or before a ride or whatever, feeling concerned about the, the behavior of, of drivers, um, seeing any drugs, being concerned that the driver's driving was, you know, concerning or anything of like that? I, I don't know. Because I'm starting to think, I'm starting to think about it like this. Like you know, I mean, he's had substance abuse issues in the past. So there was this issue, obviously. This happened at, you know, not in a vehicle. It happened at your headquarters. So there, are, is your headquarters open to the public? Members of the public? Not really. We don't have anybody there. I mean, 
random people might stop by that are friends, more like you know, um, that are customers. Well, can you tell me where, where, where the, where, if you're comfortable, where the drugs were found? Like, are they like plain view or something? No, no, it was in the back. I, due to the nature of the back my business, room? Uh, I just ask it, back room. Yes. Is that is that room open to the public? No, no. I, I due to the nature of my business. I stay at my office a lot because you know I have drivers coming at 5 a.m., 6 a.m. in the morning, and because I can't afford like an office staff or anything like that, I have to be there 100% of the time. Um, I do have an apartment. I haven't stayed there in maybe four months now, but I mean, you know, someone has to be there to give out the keys and you know, and I do the dispatching all myself. So I have like a back area with a couch and a TV that I kind of kick back and. And you know, and um, it's like the my I don't know what you call it. Yeah. Councilor Dwight. Uh, actually, I, I do know that your cap company is a reputable company, and I've, and I've said as much. In fact, actually, I've heard good things from people who have used your company, unsolicited. So. That's and that's what I think we said when we actually we granted your license last time. I made a point of saying to the public that you know you you were and I think to some extent that was the chief's chief Sinkwitz's original desire to um, grant you the license, knowing that actually your company was running as as an example. Really, as I said at the time when Chief Sinkwitz was especially concerned about the uh, conduct of other. Other drivers, maybe people abusing livery licenses and other things, and you guys functioned above board with met all the safety criteria and exceeded that, and you provided good service. And the thing is, I think we should make the distinction though, uh, because your company is a good company. That's in large part, and probably solely in part, due to your commitment to it and, you, and the struggles that you've been doing to it. <laughs> But the insurmountable part, the tricky part, is that um, we've invested, or, or the community has invested in you a couple of times, and um, with hope and trust and faith, that's been rewarded by good service, and, and but at the same time with some disappointment that comes with, and and that's and as you say. I'm trying to separate the personal from the well, business. Well, I can say this. I mean, it seems to me as though the concern is that I would be high or whatever, not the fact that it existed, because, I mean, the, the truth the truth be told is that I could also go out and pound a six-pack of beer and go drive around, right. but I don't do that. Right. No way. But you that's... Know, I, I wouldn't do that. It's not that I don't. It's that I wouldn't. But that's not... You but, know? But these things are all... These things are all originally predicated on... They're all leaps of faith. When you grant the license, you have, I mean, basically, you, you've got what you're presented with, and they're a leap of faith. You go, um, okay, go do well, that. Also, you, you, you have enough about me. I mean, you know about me, you know, just to, to formulate to a conclusion of that, all right, yeah, the guy, whatever, some drugs, which isn't the, the, the focus of this. I mean, the focus is still the permit. And is that also the public safety? So it's like, all right, now I I might have that history, but does that mean I'm out there getting all and going and picking up right. people but, to take them to the and that's well, just not the truth, case. I know, but truth be told, and it wouldn't be the case whether I, this that case existed or it didn't. Well, I mean, you know, I believe you, Jeff. Although the problem is, I have no way of ever proving that to someone. And that's, there's the rub. We, well, the and proof it, is kind of in the pudding, because I have no DUIs, I have no OUIs, I have no altercations with, with customers that said I've been under this, uh, you know, influence of, of something one way or another. I've, well, you do have, you do have, the, and it, the problem is we're all victims of our own history, so you do have, you have a number of citations relative to substance abuse and, and addiction issues, to opioids and things, as you said, you can. But not and you're clean. while driving. 
But that's have no infractions ever on my records with driving. Right, but the absence of that doesn't necessarily is not. What I'm saying is usually there's a higher criteria for the judgment. I mean, I we, we, so and also when this was visited in the past, it was visited on some other grounds that weren't just have it didn't have anything to do with a said occurrence. It was that I had had some issues in the past. I had come to this point in life where I wanted to make, you know, this. Uh, right you know, gain, be gainful employee to have this permit, right. still have the business, and I wanted to, you know, have the permit to go along with it. So it wasn't this instance where I had a permit and it was taken away, and then I agreed with it, and then it was taken away. Right. And I, it was, you know, I came down a long road, I got there, I was willing to do the work and to, you know, and to kind of work with the, with, uh, the powers of be. To, to um, well, in, in, I'm not not predicting the outcome of this vote. Although, um, say if you were denied, the fact is that you can continue to reapply, and um, um, the the fact remains is that I still I if I would I'll tell you let me put it this way I wouldn't have a problem lending you my car and letting you drive me around, but we're not talking about you and me. We're talking about something that I have a larger responsibility that I really can't, in all good conscience, reconcile by explaining to folks. I think Councilor Adams. That feel if there was a but case. Just one at a time. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, but I. And I <laughs> who I was I'm sorry. Yeah, we're having kind of. A, but Councilor Adams is right, and what Councilor Adams was, I think, moving towards was the fact that, um, uh, in some sense, and I think it's what you're you're arguing in some levels, a no harm no foul type of thing, and. But the fact remains is that um, it is. I, I have to think at the end of the day, where do, how do I go and make my case to a public? Should something happen? And the problem is, you know, knowing, knowing your luck, something horrible would happen that had nothing to do with you or anything that had anything to do with us, right? Well, I'm just saying. And if that were to occur, if that were to occur, then the public has a. a Good reason to demand of us why we weren't more diligent in, in I, vetting. Oops. No, go ahead. I'm done. All I can say is that there was no, you know, I wasn't driving and caught and doing this. I, I wouldn't do that. I'm not, you know, I, I've I've held my license. I've never had an OUI. I'm not, a, a, you know. Yes, I had some problems, but at the end, end of the day, like I said, and this is pretty much all I'm going to say is that you know there was no driving infractions involved. And that the case, it bothers me that you would feel unsafe driving with me. No, I, I, said, no, I wouldn't. Be, I, I would be. I please, and I don't um, worry about I'm, other people. That's, I'm going to let Councillor okay. Adams ask his question. Just and I'll try to get this to real in a little bit rather than. Do your drivers? Do you your driver do as well as no one? Maybe yeah, that's why I'm trying to get his point. No, I understand that. Yeah. But I, oh, I thought it's just for the business. Yeah. Not you. Well, how does this work then? Is it for the business or just you specifically? No, it's just for, no, it's just for me. It's just he can still own the business. Yeah, he just can't drive the cab. Right. Okay, so you can. You just can't drive. Okay. Right now. Well, right. well um, do, you, do your other drivers get background checks? Yes. You, okay. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Yes, Councilor. No, I'm done. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Any other questions no. for you? Or? No questions. Okay. Is there any? Um, we don't have a motion really before us. I don't know whether anyone's. Well, the. The hearing is an appeal for the overturn of the license. Okay. Then, um, um, I don't think you need a motion just because it's a okay. It's a hearing. Right. So then, um, I guess uh, if there are no other questions that any counselors have, or any other comments the chief would like to make, or. No, I think we've discussed it. The only thing, I'll just provide you the additional information that the former chief had granted uh, Mr. Miller his license in April of 2015. I just found his permit here. So he had it for three weeks or four weeks last time. You had wondered when he had reapplied. So it was April of 2015 that he was reissued a new license. Okay. April 2015 license for business? Tax, your taxi <coughs> license, that's what I had. Oh, tax. because we have to, yeah, we have to read the Yeah, she had asked yeah. before about yeah. when it was read, and that's when it was reissued. Okay, okay. So it was in 2015. Uh, I, yes, I, I can help on that. Um, mm -hmm. I think Mr. Miller had applied in August of 2012 
and was granted a license and then subsequently got licenses every year since then. Okay. So 2012, 2015, right. 14, and 15. For the, for, and, and Mr. Miller is saying that that's for the business. Okay. Okay. So we have, we're dis distinguishing between the business license and then each yeah. driver has their own taxi license. So yeah. just to, yes. to be clear, we're not talking about Mr.'s Mr. Miller's license to operate his company. No, we're, we're talking, talking about his individual, individual license, license to drive one as of his vehicles. As a taxi vehicles. driver. Yeah. Yes, okay. as a taxi driver. So I guess if no one else has any other questions. Did yes, okay. Are we, no, I don't have questions. Are we going to have discussion or is it? We, yeah, well, we can have discussion then oh, among or ourselves. Or we can, you said you don't think it's appropriate for a motion and you just want us to vote directly on the appeal. I just, I, I don't, I'm not sure. I mean, I, you know, I, I, you were associated with the last appeal, so I don't know what the program last time, was. Well, last appeal, we had a motion I, to accept I or think not. it, right, I yeah. think that probably a, a motion would be in order. Well, um, and it would be sort of. So I guess the motion that would be in order would be one that would say um, that this committee upholds the denial or overturns the denial of the, of the permit. That's the motion? That's a motion that would be in order, not from me, because I'm chairing the meeting, no, no, but I'm sure. asking if there's somebody, if somebody were to make, the, they could make it in one of two ways. They could make a motion to Got uphold. It. Got it. I, I was not talking about Uphold, or they could make it in another way. So, I mean, there's some flexibility here, but a motion would be in order from someone if we were to move forward at all to either uphold the denial or to overturn the denial of Mr. Miller's comment. Can I just say uh, one yeah. quick thing, really quick? Uh, this year, actually, our first year that we have not had one claim or one accident in the whole year. Just so we know. Okay. And then the other accidents we have were minor fender benders that we've never had a major accident. Okay, so there's been no accidents. Are there, are there any other things, comments that the chief would like to offer? Okay. No. Is there any member of the committee that would like to um, offer a motion so that we can move, move forward? Um, I'll move the appeal be upheld. That to uh, up I, I, to uphold the denial of the permit. Okay, so the motion is to uphold the denial of the permit. Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay, so the the motion before us is to uphold the denial of the permit. Motion made by Councilor White, seconded by Councilor Murphy. Okay, and um, I guess we have to now time for discussion. Yeah. Uh, throughout the course of this discussion, I now have a completely different perspective on this. The, 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 these drugs were found in a, in a back room of his business. The, there's nothing that tells me it affects the service of the business. There's nothing, and, and, I, and I do, I do um, draw a conclusion from the absence of evidence from the police department that, there's been, and that, there, that there has ever been any problems with the service, that there's there ever been anyone uncomfortable with the behavior of any drivers. And the reason why I asked that, because I was wondering behavior, you know, Specifically, if someone were under the influence, perhaps they're, they would have different behavior or different driving. Um, th there doesn't seem to be any of that. Um, he's had the business for four years. The, the charges were dismissed, and, 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 um, and I would still be concerned despite their dismissal. But I'm not anymore because they're found in the back of a business that, and I don't know if any members of the public were present, um, and and you know, again, I just don't see how this affects the service of the business at all. You know, it seems like it, we're, it seems like we're coming to a point where we're looking at addiction and, and starting to have more empathy with people who are drug addicted and have substance abuse issues throughout the years. Um, this is a case where the courts couldn't punish Mr. Miller, but now if we deny his appeal, we'll be punishing him. And, and, I, and I just, I, I, would, I, would be, I would support that and, 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 and and would be comfortable with that and walk in the door thinking that I was going to do that. But now I see it as a different issue. M Mr. Miller had some drugs in the back of his business, and part of the business that's not open to the public, and he went through some relapse that, that didn't affect the business. So, you know, if, I just don't, you know, 
like I was saying, we're, we're moving to this point in our society where we're trying to be more empathetic with addiction, but then we're going to punish him for possessing drugs unrelated to his business. I can't do that, so I, I don't support the, I, I, I think he should have the permit. Yes? I, and I was having so much fun with you, as with you, I think, and, but the, the tipping point for me in the other direction was, first of all, this isn't about his business, and I wanted to keep that separate because his business is exemplary, as far as I can tell. Every, all evidence points to that. And this, I agree with you also that uh, to, and by the way, and that's why I want to make the point, that this is not a punishment. This is actually denial of a privilege. We don't, we're not meeting a punishment. We're upholding a denial of a permit that actually is called by the privilege. And the, as I said before, the thing that makes it most difficult for me is I can't go beyond here. Should, fairly or unfairly, any circumstance that leads to something that uh, more egregious than offender better. Um, and God forbid you be attributed to OUI. With Jeffrey, not with, with Jeff, not anyone else, not his other drivers. I'm just talking because we're only talking about his permit to operate, not his business or anything else. It does impact his business, but it's not a judgment on his business, and it doesn't, um, it, and in fact, it is, however, a judgment of sorts on his, on himself. The nature of substance abuse and addiction, as we acknowledge it, is a disease, and as such, um, you know, Jeff has to deal with that, and he struggles with that, and has struggled with it, and he will struggle with it for the rest of his life, because it's it's like diabetes in that respect. The problem is, is that when you're clean, you're clean. You're not a little clean, like being a little pregnant. And this, this, this is a, a subjective opinion, so I'm, I'm not pretending that I'm an authority on this. But the fact is that even, you know, doing a little pot, doing a little coke, not drinking is there's really, you can't slip a piece of paper in between the, the challenges that are associated with that. I don't, it's, I don't have the authority nor the desire to ask Jeff deeper probing questions about his personal life because that's, he's, it's not fair to put him in that position to, to, to uh, make him personally plead for his, his, his permit to operate. So I'm functioning only on this one very basic level, which is, can I say at the end of the day, if, if, if something were to happen, that we were challenged, and if say someone were to sue the city, um, what, uh, did I feel really strong in my consideration that he was deserving of a, of a permit that had been denied by the police department? And unfortunately, I've not heard anything that actually would change my mind in that respect. So uh, that's, that's why I'm at where I'm at. Okay, and comes mm -hmm. the work you have more and, to say. And again, I, uh, Mr. Miller's run his business for a long time without a permit to operate himself personally. And his business seems to be successful and, uh, and it seems to provide a, a service to the community. And I had no objection to that. But, you know, the drugs that were discovered were not in the public area, they were in his area. And, and that's why I have a hard time giving him his own personal permit to drive. I have no objection to him having a business permit to run his business. He seems to be pretty good at that. My only my concern with him operating one of his vehicles under the circumstances that I have a hard time with. And you know, I have no, no objection to him continuing the taxi cab business and being there for quite a while uh, and, and being successful at it. But under the circumstances to personally operate right at this point in time, I'm not comfortable with that. Um, I tend to agree with Councillor Adams on this matter, just the, you know, with the, um, the amount of uh, marijuana that was discovered was, you know, not, it was in the back room and had nothing to do with it. So I, I, I would, I would vote to um, no, meaning to not uphold the denial and rather to overturn that's what my vote would be but um, I guess I'll ask if there's nothing more from any other counselors that would go ahead and take the vote and we could we could do that um, I'll ask all those in favor of upholding the denial say aye 
Aye. And those opposed say nay. Yeah. Nay. And it is again a two to two vote, and so the appeal um, is upheld. And uh, I'm sorry, the appeal, the, uh, the original denial is upheld, and the appeal is denied. So um, that's the decision, and I don't know that there'll be anything more that you'll receive in writing on this, or just your experience here. Okay. So yes. just to clarify procedurally, the motion to uphold the appeal failed. So this is like one of those. That's exactly. It's like the, yeah. it's like the first yeah, the center court vote. Because, because the so I'm not exactly because the last time I think we did, we, I think the, I think the last time was the motion to deny the appeal. Right. So that failed. So that was kind of that was kind of. Yeah. Clear. And this time we that voted we, to sustain the denial. Right. <laughs> right. Sustain the denial. Right. Yeah. Right. It's, right. I think I think to come to Adam's point that it should be another motion with a vote. Yeah, you um, might want to do that for clarification okay. purposes. Okay. Yeah, so. All right. Then so we'll get that if someone sentence. wants to offer another well, another try, motion, I will move that we grant the appeal. Right, we grant the appeal um, to override the original denial. That's my motion. Do you understand that, Pam? Is your, your, the appeal? To, the appeal, you're you sustain the appeal and override the denial. Is the well, well, that's, the denial. you know, override the mm -hmm. denial. So we want to. Right. Yes, the department's denial of permitting. I'm reversing <laughs> my original motion so that we can do this vote again. So, for clarity's sake, we so can vote both ways. <laughs> we can vote both ways, just to, okay. so that, that. So, what I'm saying is that we, uh, my motion is to um, grant, the grant the appeal and and overturn the denial by the the chief. Okay. Yeah, All right. So we're having another motion to grant the appeal of, of Mr. Miller and overturn the uh, permit denial. So we to switch our and I'll ask, yes. I'll ask all those that in favor. Clarify. I need a second. Oh, I'm sorry. Is there a second? Uh, would would well, one, someone else? Second. So yeah. Councilor Adams seconds that motion. Okay, all those in favor of granting the appeal, say aye. Aye. No, no, no. Granting the appeal? Oh, yeah. Aye. Uh, uh, Adams and, and Carney vote yes to grant the appeal. And those opposed say nay. Aye. Councilors Dwight and Murphy voted no. And so um, that lost. motion is defeated. On a vote of two to two, and the appeal is denied. Okay. All right. Thank you, Chief Casper and Mr. Miller. Do we have any other business? And I'll ask: Is there any other business? There shouldn't be. It was not posted. Is no, no, there no, anything not. else besides this? Then I'll ask if there's a. We got them on Thursday. We're gonna do these minutes on Thursday. <laughs> Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. I moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. And thank you all.